Yeah, so when we talk about modules, what we're talking about are these tabs that run across the top of the screen there. So this screenshot kind of shows a standard CRM kind of fresh out of the box and the core modules that you'll see upon opening it up. So today we're kind of going to focus on those modules on the left-hand side of the screen, basically from leads to contacts, accounts, deals, and activities. Um, and so we'll kind of kick off by starting with the leads. Um, so leads inside of the CRM are basically like your unqualified sales opportunities, right? So these are people that you meet at a trade show. They're people that maybe fill out a contact us form on your website, but they're not people that your sales team has really made active contact with, you know, where you know that this is a real person that really has some interest and, you know, has a budget to maybe work with your company on a project. Um, so you can kind of think about them like a business card, right? They're a person at a company who you know exists, but you don't really know if they're interested at all in moving forward. And now we're also going to highlight on this screen one of the three different views that you can use to look at a module. So you'll see here in the top right, we have the view on the right there selected out of those three little icons. So that's called the canvas view. It basically gives you the ability to make these little contact cards for people that show up with some custom formatting. And you can include the image over there on the left. Um, so you can kind of design the look and feel of this list view using the Canvas view. And there's a lot that can be done with Canvas views. Uh, here's one kind of quick example. This is showing a coin collection built in Canvas view. So this is just Zoho all in the Canvas view. Uh, you basically, this is taking advantage of the image field that exists inside of a, every single module. So there's a lot of different things you can do with it. And uh, not a lot of people use it. Oftentimes they're kind of stuck in this default view that we see here. And really not a lot happens here. And kind of before we move on, the key focus here is going to be leads and how it really relates to contacts, accounts, and deals and activities and how all those things flow together. Because that seems to be as we work with people and we set up their CRMs, it's one of the areas where there's just a lot of disconnect as to what should be done with these and how they should flow. So in context, these are people that you actually maybe have done business with or someone that you hopefully at some point in time have communicated with. So when you actually convert a lead and you, you take a lead and remember a lead has all of the elements um, that are associated with all these records, both accounts and contacts and deals. It has fields in it that will fill in the contact information, write the account information, the company information as it were. And if you are actually going to create an opportunity or a deal a business potential transaction with them, it also can fill in that information. So a contact, there's a lot of, you know, this can be someone you are doing business with or someone you're actually engaged with and plan on doing business with. And, you know, if you look here, this is actually a standard list view. This is kind of one of my favorites. So those little, the, the, the horizontal lines, they represent, hey, just display everything for me in a list. As we move forward here, we move into the accounts page. So the accounts are basically like the company on file for a given contact, right? So again, if we think starting from the lead, you know, a lead is a person who works at a company. And once you convert them, the person becomes that contact and the company becomes this account. So there's a type of place that you would store like the company's billing information, maybe their website. Um, some type of central phone number that doesn't call a specific person, but maybe calls their help desk. Um, so these basically just store the company information. Now you can have contacts nested under these accounts. And of course, you can have multiple contacts for a single account. So they kind of define what we would call the top of the hierarchy, where you've got contacts underneath them and you've got deals or opportunities underneath these accounts. And I know this is real basic stuff right now. I promise we're going to get into a little more nitty gritty, but we kind of wanted to lay down the foundation. So talking about deals here, uh, this is where you basically are delineating. I have potential of doing business with this person. Here's what it looks like. And here's where I am in that process of potentially closing a sale with them. And this is in the Kanban view. And so Kanban views allow you actually to drag these little cards from one column to the next as a person moves through a particular pipeline as you will. So if you ever, you can use this view with um, leads, although not very 
good for those kind of things. It actually works relatively well also with activities. If you want to move something from open to closed or in progress, those kind of things. So normally you'll see this type of view used in deals or activities. Speaking of which, Tyler, why don't you go into through activities real quick here? So activities are kind of the little engine of the CRM and they break down into a couple different categories. Um, so underneath an activity, you can have a task, uh, which is basically like a little flag that, you know, we need to do a thing for a person or for a deal. Those tasks can have due dates and reminders and priorities associated with them, as you would expect in any type of tasking system. Then, of course, you can have events. So events are basically where you'd have something like a calendar event, right? So you've got a webinar coming up or a meeting that's scheduled at a specific date and time with a specific group of people. And then last but not least, you have calls, which as you would, uh, as you'd probably assume relate to, you know, a call that you're going to place out to a person. Um, the trick with those calls, and we won't dig into this too much, is that if you do have a voiceover IP option, something like Ring Central or AirCall uh, integrated with your CRM, those call records can be automatically created as you're placing calls out to your prospects or contacts.